Homebrewers! Welcome! Hope you're having a fantastic one. Uh, I am. We're about to have some fun and do something a little bit different. Now, normally I don't use wine kits. It's not because I don't like them, it's just because, well, I like making my own stuff to how I want to make it. But there's nothing wrong with a wine kit, so I picked one up. Like so, yeah. Anyway, enough with the bad jokes. So I picked up a six bottle wine kit. It cost me £12.50 and it's made by California Connoisseur. Now, it is a little bit more expensive than the uh, the Buddy Brew. You know, they're, they're like a tenor, mix seven day wine. Perfectly acceptable. It is a sugar wine with uh, flavorings. That, that's what that one is. Nothing wrong with that if you're just looking for something that tastes like wine doesn't have to be wine to taste like it. But the thing that got me to this kit was one, the name Cabernet Merlot. Oh yeah, so instantly, of course, it's a blend of two things. I'm of course gonna like it, but you don't add any sugar into this. It's all pre-done. So uh, let's take a look inside the box. So in the kit, it's everything you need to make a one gallon batch. Now what it doesn't have is a demijohn, and well, there are tons of them around. You can go and buy official ones, you know, do whatever you want. If you buy a brand new one, it needs to be sterilized. And I just couldn't be bothered. So I went up the shop to my local shop and bought five liters of still water. It happens to be the same container that they use for fermenting. The only difference is this has water in it and it is already as sterile as it's gonna get until you open it. So I'm gonna use this, because it makes everything easier. Now the only thing that is optional, but is handy to have, but at the same time it's optional, is a hydrometer that has to be sterilized, and I'm just keeping it in cold water over there. My side has been wiped down and sterilized, though you don't really need to do it because, well, we're not, it's, it's poor and done. But if you want to, or you're a newbie, Sterilize it just to make sure because well sterilizing is the best way how to make sure you don't grow funky mold So with that being said let us make this kit so for pure ease for me because you know I'm making it so I want it as easy as I can make it I have got myself the kettle now I could just pour this down the drain and you know be whatever But uh, I get a free cup of coffee don't have to pay for it, why not use it? So we know that the liquid in here is 1.5 litres. This is 5 litres, we need to take out just over 1.5, as in 2 litres of water, approximately. Now, ah, there we go. That was rather full. So, in goes our water to make room for our lovely wine. Looking good, so... I've taken out just over, eh, sorry, it fell out. We can always add a bit of water in. So it's over the two litre mark that I have taken out. My kettle is nice and filled, and I can make a coffee. Booty. So now comes the hard bit. We've got a now not sterile container, as close as we're gonna get. So don't leave it around, don't hang around, you know, do this straight away. So we've got a bag of jus. Now let's open this up. How does it open? Is it pop cap? I have returned with a cutting thing. Now, so uh, I'm keeping my hands well away because I like slicing my fingers. Not a good idea. So the lid should just pop off, but okay, the knife is cutting it off. Either way, I don't care as long as it comes off and I don't cut myself or cut the bag. Because that'll be a difficult one to explain. What is everything? Whoa! Yeah, that came off. Why is everything purple? Because I cut everything. So, we've got our 1.5 litres of jus, and it's just a case of pouring it straight in. That's how simple this is. Now it does say to rinse this out so I can take a little bit of the water. Put my hands, even though they have been sterilised, they're, they're clean enough. Just give it a rinse, and there we go. Well, 
it's a little full, but at the same time, that looks pretty good. Minimal uh, wastage, but it smells good, so that's all I care about. So, we're going to add in all of this stuff in a second, but we're going to shake it up and give it a reading with the hydrometer. So if we've done this right, it should be somewhere around 1.080 to 1.095, depending on how you do it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see in a minute. Let's give it a good shake. Yeah, get that purple wine stuff everywhere. So I've given it a few minutes to, for the foam on the top to die down so we can take a hydrometer reading. Gave me time to make a coffee and, you know, coffee's good. Very tasty. Anyway, so back on with this. So we've got a hydrometer and uh, basically we're just going to dump it in and test it. So according to the kit, if you read the destructions, I had a little look. Um, it's somewhere between 1.080 and 1.095. Somewhere. But, um, you know, whichever really, it really depends on the size of the demijohn. This looks about 5 litres. So, yeah, actual 5 litres. So, let's see the hydrometer. It's resting right at the 13% mark, and it's saying here it is 1.080. Very slightly over, but close enough. So, how does it taste? Tastes like grape juice. Sweet grape juice with a bit of tannin. Should be good. So we've just got to add in our last additions, which I'm just going to do all at once, right at the end. So in goes our oak chips. Lovely, lovely. Now you don't have to add in the oak chips. You don't have to do it whatsoever, but yeah, why not? It's finely powdered like sawdust. In it goes. Hopefully, it will give some extra tannic tastiness. It should be good, it's a kit wine. So, uh, next we've got our bentonite. So it does say to individually dissolve these in a bit of warm water, but I didn't fancy doing it. I'm just gonna add it all in the, this one demijohn. In it goes. And then next, the two grams of yeast. Now the reason that I'm doing it all at the end is because, uh, well, these water containers have lids that seal, so we can just put the lid on and shake the bejesus out of it. No need to, you know, leave the yeast on the top. You don't need to do any of that. Let's make our lives as simple as possible. This is a one and done. So once the yeast is added, technically we've made wine. Technically. Still got to let it ferment. So now we're going to stick the lid on nice and tight and give this a damn good shaking. And that's just basically done. We have created a very simple wine kit. Uh, yeah, ignoring most of the instructions, but it will turn out the same pretty much. So the only last thing we've got to do is open the lid, put it on and give it a quarter turn just so it's on, but not, you know, sealed so the gas can escape, otherwise it explodes. Uh, people have asked, oh, do you keep the lids on tightly? No, no, they're loose fit, they're loose, they just, yeah, they're just on, but, you know, you can be taken off. It's just to release the pressure and stop bugs from getting in. And that's just done. So we're not gonna do the seven day second fermentation because, um, you know, the second week fermentation thing, because we, we don't need to, we don't need to do it, so I'm not gonna. Uh, the resulting wine will be the same, just all the crud will be in the bottom, and we only have to take it off once. I like that. One and done. Makes my life so much easier. So we're going to come back in one month's time, where we should be bottling this bad boy up and drinking it, because it's a one month thing. So we'll get to see how this wine kit performs. I'm interested. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones, and well, you know, subscribe, comment, do all those things. And more importantly, carry on homebrew. See you later. Ooh, coffee.